So dear students, let's talk about another part of video discussion of CSAT 2020 question paper. Here we'll be taking the set of next five questions, right? So let's start with the discussion. A frog tries to come out of a dried well 4.5 meter deep with slippery walls. Every time the frog jumps 30 centimeter, slides down 15 centimeter, okay? What is the number of jumps required for the frog to come out of the well? Okay, fine. See, everyone, 4.5 meter, if you convert this value into centimeter, you will get 450 centimeter, right? So the height of the well is 450 centimeter, or you can say the depth, right? So the depth of the well is 450 centimeter, right? So a frog has to climb 450 centimeter to reach the top, right? Okay, so one upward jump is what? It is of 30 centimeter, right? So total 420 centimeter. See everyone, why I'm doing this? Because when the frog will be at 420th centimeter, he will be taking a jump of 30 centimeter and he will be reaching on the top, right? So after this, he won't slip down because he will be coming to the top, all right? So once he will be at 420th meter, he will take a jump of 30 centimeter and he will be on the top, right? So actually what we need to find in this question, we need to find how many jumps are required for the frog to come to 420th centimeter, right? And after that, one more jump will be required to reach on the top, right? Okay. So for 420 centimeter, we need to find how many jumps are required. So 420 divided by 15, right? So 420 divided by 15 will give you 28 jumps. So 28 jumps will be required to come to 4. 20 centimeter and after that one more jump will be required to reach on the top. So 28 plus 1, 29 jumps, right? So 29 jumps will be required to reach on the top, right everyone? So the answer is 29 jumps, right? So this question, this question actually this is a concept of mathematics. This is you can say basic numeracy or it can be categorized on the puzzle section also, right? But uh, this is a concept which can be used in so many uh, questions of mathematics. In fact, in time speed distance also we use this method, right? And in uh, in time and work also we solve this. Uh, we use this method where negative work is there, or in pipes and cisterns also we use this method, right? Where one pipe is filling the tank and another pipe is like emptying the tank, or it is a leak which is which is emptying the tank and they both are uh, operating in alternate manner, right? So there also you can use this uh, uh, technique. I mean, we, we can get this concept for the questions, right? But yes, in these type of questions, a set approach is there where first of all, you have to subtract the positive work from the total work. You have to subtract the positive work from the total work. This is the approach of these type of questions, right? Because here also I have done the same. The total work is what? 450 centimeter and the positive work is 30 centimeter, right? And the negative work is 15 centimeter, right? Okay. So total work minus positive work is the approach of these type of questions. So just start these type of question with this only total work minus positive work. Okay, everyone. Fine. Okay. If for this particular question, I'm talking about the ideal solving time. So I think the ideal solving time is around one minute right? If uh, you are in the examination, so during the examination, if you are solving this question, the ideal solving time is around one minute. But yes, if you have solved many questions like this, you can solve this question is around like 20 to 30 seconds. That's it, right? But provided uh, you are very much comfortable with these type of questions. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about the another question. Okay. Question says, how many different five letter words with or without meaning can be constructed using all the letters of the word Delhi so that each word has to start with D and end with I? Okay, D and I. So E-L-H, right? E-L-H. This question belongs to permutation and combination, right? Permutation and combination. Okay. 
Okay. So E L H. See everyone, we will just try like the maximum combination of these three characters, right? So like the first is starting with E, then L, then H, then E constant. I mean E remains at its place. Then H L H L are swapping, right? Now let's say they are starting with L, E H, L H E. Then let's say they are starting with H E L, H L E, right? Okay. So, how many words are there? Total six words are there, right? Okay, fine. So everyone, actually, this question belongs to permutation and combination, but these type of question, I mean, this is a very simple question of word formation. So this question can be solved with general thinking only, right? No any concept, nothing is required for this question. No any factorial, no any formula, right? Nothing is required. Just a very simple counting, fine. Okay. So this question is like this will take how much time of your? I think 40-50 seconds, right? Not more than this, right? Everyone, fine. Okay. Now let's talk about the another question. Next question says a bottle contains 20 liters of liquid A. 4 liters of liquid A is taken out of it and replaced by same quantity of liquid B. Again 4 liters of the mixture is taken out and replaced by the same quantity of liquid B. What is the ratio of the quantity of liquid A to that of liquid B in the final mixture? Okay. This question belongs to mixtures and allegation. Mixtures and allegation. And this is actually a simple question. In fact, uh, if you don't know how to solve this type of question, then also you have to solve this question because uh, this is an easy question. Because like, uh, you know, just follow the instructions of the question, you will get the correct answer, right? So a bottle contains 20 liters of liquid A. Fine. So 20 liters of liquid A is there in the bottle. 4 liters is taken out and replaced by the same quantity of liquid B. Fine. So after first operation, 4 liters of A has been taken out and same quantity of B has been poured to the bottle. Right. This is the first operation. Right. Now everyone, the ratio of liquid A is to liquid B in the bottle is what? 4 is to 1, right? Now anything will be taken out from this mixture, it will be like coming out in the ratio of 4 is to 1, right everyone? I mean, in the vessel, uh, the two liquids are in the ratio of 4 is to 1, fine. So anything this will be like anything will be taken out from this vessel will be coming out in the ratio of 4 is to 1 only, right? So now for the next time, when 4 liters of this mixture is being taken out, for the next time when 4 liters of this mixture is being taken out, it will come out in the ratio of 4 is to 1, right? So 4 liters in the ratio of 4 is to 1. So if you divide 4 liters in the ratio of 4 is to 1, 3.2 is 2.8, I mean 3.2 and 0.8, fine. So when you are like taking 4 liters of, I mean second operation when you are doing, when you are taking 4 liters of this mixture, so obviously 3.2 liter will be coming, uh, 3.2 liter of mixture A will come out and 0.8 liter of mixture B will come out, right? So 12.8 liter of mixture A is left and 3.2 liter of mixture B is left in the vessel, right? And now when you are, you know, when you are pouring the same quantity of B, right? So same quantity of B, I mean, when you are adding 4 liters of mixture B in the vessel, then in the vessel there is 12.8 liter of A and 7.2 liters of B is there, right? So now, what is the ratio of the quantity of liquid A to liquid B in the final mixture? Okay, fine. So ratio is what? 12.8 is to 7.2, right? So this is what? This is a 128 is to 72, right? So both the numbers are divisible by 8. So 16 is to 9, right? So this is the final answer, right everyone? 
So this question belongs to mixtures and allegations, and this is a very simple question, right? There is no background is needed to solve these type of questions. Just follow the instructions of the question. You can solve this question very correctly, right? And obviously, uh, alertness is needed because some chances of mistakes are always there in these type of questions because you know language is, uh, I mean, there is a lot of you have to comprehend while solving these type of questions because this question is a bit lengthy uh, to read actually, right? So uh, chances of mistake is there during the examination hall because there is a pressure also inside the examination hall, right? So, but if I talk about the ideal solving time, so ideal solving time for this question is around one minute, right? But everybody should try this question. This is a simple question, right? That you can solve without any background, right? Without any prior knowledge, you can solve this question. Okay, so now let's talk about the next question. The average score of a batsman after 50th innings, average, okay? So obviously this question belongs to the topic average. The average score of a batsman after 50th innings was 46.4. After 60th innings, his average score increased by 2.6. Okay, so when his average increased by 2.6, then obviously after 60th inning, his average becomes his average becomes 49, right? Okay, so what was his average score in the last 10 innings? See everyone, in last 10 innings, how much did he score? He scored like 49 runs for the 10 innings plus these many runs so that he has given 2.6 to first 50 innings also right so he has scored 2.6 for the 50 innings also right i repeat the statement again after 60th inning his average was 49 right so from 50 to 60th i mean from 51st inning to 60th innings what did he score he just scored 49 of his own for all the last 10 innings plus 2.6 runs 2.6 into 50 runs more because he has distributed 2.6 to first 50 innings also right so for the last 10 innings what did he score 490 49 into 10 is 490 plus this is 130 right so for last 10 innings he has scored 620 more runs i mean 620 runs so his average for the last 10 innings will be what 620 divided by 10 this is 62 runs, right? See everyone, actually I have solved this question with the help of contribution process, contribution method, right? To learn contribution method, you have to uh, check our, the, our video of average, right? So like we teach like this only in our class also, right everyone? We teach like this in our class. So. Uh, if I talk about the ideal solving time for this question, I don't think that more than 40 seconds are required for this question. Only 40 seconds are required, right? And please don't do this like from the traditional mathematical process, right? Uh, just watch our more videos which are there in the YouTube channel. You will get, uh, I mean, uh, you will get the ideas how to solve the questions, okay? So fine. Now let's talk about the other question, okay? As a result of 25% hike in the price of rice per kg, a person is able to purchase 6 kg less rice for Rs. 1200. What was the original price of rice per kg? See everyone, this question belongs to percentage, right? Percentage compensation is the topic for this question, right? Question says, as a result of 25% hike in the price of rice per kg, a person is able to purchase 6 kg less rice for Rs. 1200. See everyone, if I talk about rupees 1200, right? So 25% of 1200 is what? It is 25% means one fourth, right? So one fourth of 1200 is what? 300, right? So it means what? Today there is a hike of rupees 300 with respect to 1200. I repeat, today there is a hike of rupees 300 with respect to 1200, right? So I should say the the quantity, the quantity which was earlier available, which was earlier available for 
rupees twelve hundred is now available for rupees fifteen hundred, right? Because the price has been hiked by three hundred rupees. I mean, the price has been hiked by twenty five percent, right? So the article, I mean, the quantity that was available for twelve hundred earlier is now available for fifteen hundred, right? So if today a person is paying rupees twelve hundred, so if today, if today a man is paying twelve hundred, a man is paying twelve hundred. He is paying three hundred less, right? Because that quantity is now available for fifteen hundred rupees. And if today also he is paying rupees twelve hundred, he is paying three hundred rupees less, right? So for that less rupees, for that three hundred less, he is getting six kg less. So for that, he is getting six kg less. right okay so today's price so today's price so today is today 6 kg is available for rupees 300 right so today's price is 300 divided by 6 is 50 rupees per kg so today's price is 50 rupees per kg right and today's price is actually 125% of the original price Today's price is one twenty five percent of the original price. So one twenty five percent of the original price is rupees fifty. Then hundred percent of the original price is what? Fifty by one twenty five into hundred. So this is what this is forty rupees, right? Or you can say the ratio is five is to four. One twenty five is to hundred is what? Five is to four. So it has to be five is to four. So this is forty rupees, right? so original quantity i mean original price was 40 rupees per kg right everyone so original price was 40 rupees per kg fine this question based on thinking only so everybody if you if you can think like this then by reading this question you can solve this and definitely you will be taking around 15 20 seconds maximum 15 seconds to solve this question if you can think like this the way i have solved this question right this is a very good approach of solving percentage compensation question right okay now let's talk about the other one all right this part is over friends right so thank you so very much thanks for watching thank you thank you